Hey everyone, Dylan here from AOSCB, and today I'm going to teach you how to play New York Zoo. Now, this is the newest polyomino game from Uwe Rosenberg, who's become something of a polyomino master in the last number of years. Uh, and this one is a little different in that there are no points. You're actually just racing to be the first one to complete your board. And if you do that, you will be the winner. The other trick that this one has is that you are placing animals on each of the tiles that you place on your board. And those animals are being used to get bonus tiles, which then speed up your completion of your board uh, and lead you to victory a little bit quicker. So uh, this one, I like to say it's a, it's a simple game game masquerading as a complex one because the rule book uh, does a, a good job of making it seem a lot more complicated than it is. So I'm hoping this video will help you get this to the table just a little bit quicker and break down what isn't a complex game so that you can teach it to your friends and your family and play it uh, next time you want to hit the table with it. So let's jump right into it. <laughs> To set up, give each player a zoo board. In the bottom left, each board will indicate which amount of players it is used for. Keep in mind they are double-sided. After you've selected a starting player, make sure you give them the board in the correct player count that has the number one in the bottom right. Sort the animals by type and have them at the ready along with all the attraction tiles sorted by size, and then place the elephant on the blue spot with the red circle on it. Lastly, we need to place all the enclosure pieces on the track. You'll do so in this order, lightest green, light green, dark green, and darkest green. For those with any accessibility concerns, you can sort them based on the amount of spaces they cover as well. These cover four spaces, these cover five spaces, these cover six, and these cover seven, and you will place them in that order. Starting with the lightest green tiles that cover four spaces, place one on each of these spots labeled by this small green square. Next, you will place one of the light green enclosures that cover five spots on every spot on the board. For the spots that already have tiles, place this tile on top of it. Next, place one of the dark green enclosures that cover six spaces on every spot on the board as well, on top of the existing tiles. And finally, place the darkest green enclosures that cover seven spaces on the seven spots with this darkest green square, on top of the existing tiles as well. Lastly, look at the top of your player board and take two starting animals based on what animals are in the top left and right corners. Place each one on an empty house on your board. And that's it, now you're ready to play. So like I mentioned at the beginning, this is a game about racing to complete your board. There are no points. The first one to complete their board will be the winner. To do this, you're gonna be taking three possible actions on your turn, and those are first, moving the elephant, second, taking a main action, and third, if possible, animal breeding. So let's take a look at those now. At the start of your turn, you can move the elephant one to four spaces in a two or four player game, or one to three spaces in a three or five player game. There are two spots that are considered legal spaces to move the elephant any spot with an enclosure tile, or any blue animal acquisition spot. So for instance, from the starting spot in a two-player game, I could choose to move here, 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 or here. Note, once a spot is emptied of tiles, it is no longer considered a legal spot, and thus you would skip it when counting out your amount of spaces to move. Likewise, these orange areas are not spots you can land on. They are triggered when you pass them for animal breeding, but I'll explain that in a bit. So the second action on your turn is your main action, and this will differ depending on which of the two spots you landed on, whether you landed on a tile, or whether you landed on a blue animal acquisition spot. So I'll go over these now. If you land on an enclosure tile, you will place the topmost tile anywhere on your player board. The placement rules are standard fare for Uwe Rosenberg polyomino games. You can place the tile anywhere, it doesn't have to be next to a previously placed tile. You can't overlap tiles, and you can't have any part of a tile sticking off of the grid. You also can rotate and flip the tile however you wish. After you place this tile, you must add one or two animals to it. You can take these animals from one of the ones you have stored on one of your houses, or you can take these from one or two different enclosures that already have animals on them in your zoo. Note though that you can never take an animal from another enclosure if it would leave that enclosure empty. You must be able to leave at least one animal behind. Also, each enclosure can only have one species of animals on it. So if I take a penguin and add it to this newly placed enclosure, only penguins can be placed here from now on. If you don't have any animals in your houses to place on the enclosure and you don't have any legal animals you can move from another enclosure, then you simply can't take a tile, which means you wouldn't be able to take the elephant and move it onto a polyomino space. This is a really good time to mention a very important basic rule that always applies in New York Zoo, and that is that whenever you place an animal on an enclosure, whether that be from an action or whatever the case is, when you place an animal onto an enclosure, you are allowed to take a bonus animal from one of your houses and add it 
into that same enclosure if it's the same species. So for instance, if I placed this new tile and took a meerkat from another tile to place on it, it would allow me to take another meerkat from one of my storage houses and add it to this same tile. I can only do this once and the bonus meerkat has to come from a house. It can't come from one of my other tiles. This important general rule is listed at the top of your board with this illustration to remind you of it. Also to quickly note, you can never add more than two animals to an enclosure with a single action. So you wouldn't be able to add a meerkat to a newly placed tile and chain that into two meerkats from your houses. The most amount of animals you can ever add to a tile through one action is two. The other spot you can move an elephant to for your main action is one of the blue animal acquisition spots. When you move the elephant to one of these, you will take one of each of the animals shown on the spot and add them to your board. Alternatively, you could forego taking these two animals and instead take a single animal of any type of your choice. You now must immediately add these animals to your board. You can either place these animals in an empty house or you can add them to existing enclosures that already have animals of that species. So for instance, if I landed here and took a flamingo and a kangaroo, I could add one to this empty house and I could add the other to this enclosure that already has flamingos. And remember the general rule applies here. So if I add either of these animals to enclosures that are already on my board, it will trigger the ability to grab an animal of the same species from one of my houses and add it to that same enclosure. Whenever the placement of an animal completely fills an enclosure, you will empty that enclosure of all animals. If you have an empty house on your board, you can store one of these animals into that empty house. Now as a reward for completing this enclosure, you may take an attraction of your choice and add it to your board. So the benefit here obviously is that these attractions help you accelerate the speed at which you're gonna complete your player board. So generally you wanna to try to go for the biggest tiles that are available. So for instance, this biggest one is usually the first one claimed when one person clears an enclosure. However, you will also have little tricky spots on your board that you need to fill. You might have a single gap that needs to be filled and you might need to take single squares to fill them or you might have an annoying you know, little L shape that you have to fill. So you have to kind of balance, do I wanna take the ones that cover the most space to accelerate my progress? Or do I wanna to try to fill all those little gaps while I can? The last possible step on your turn is animal breeding. This step will only occur if you pass one of these orange animal breeding markers with the elephant. If you did, animal breeding will trigger only for the animal shown on the marker that you passed. And this breeding will occur for all players in the game, not just the one who moved the elephant. If you did not pass one of these markers with the elephant, you skip this step of your turn and your turn is over. For whichever animal marker you pass, you'll breed in up to two enclosures in your zoo of that species. Now, you can only breed if there is at least two animals on an enclosure, but it doesn't matter if there are three, four, five, or six animals there, you only breed a single animal onto that tile. So for instance, if I pass this penguin breeding marker, I would add a single penguin to this enclosure. I could also add a single penguin to this enclosure. I would not be able to add a penguin to this third enclosure because you can only breed in a max of two enclosures per breeding. And once again, I'll annoy you by reminding you that the general rule applies here. So if you add an animal through animal breeding to any of these tiles, you can then look at your houses and take an animal of that same species and add it to that same tile. And the very last thing to note is that there is a bonus rule that only applies for two and three player games. And that is that if you successfully breed any animal, you can then do a bonus breeding of any type of animal that you want. So for instance, if I passed the meerkat marker and successfully bred at least one enclosure of meerkats, I can look at all my other enclosures and any that have at least two animals on them, I can do a bonus breeding. That could be another meerkat or that could be any animal of my choice. But again, this only applies for the two and three player versions of the game. And the game continues with players doing these actions on their turn until a player successfully completes their entire zoo. Now, if this happens on the main action of a player's turn, there will only be, only be one player who reaches this completed uh, board. And in that case, the game will just immediately end. However, if it happens on the animal breeding phase, it is possible that the animal breeding could trigger both players completing their zoos at the same time. If this does happen, the tiebreaker is whoever has the most animals in their zoo, and if players are still tied, you share the victory. 
The rule book has a variant for shorter rules only for the two player game if you're looking for just a really quick experience. And there's also a solo variant that you can look at. So if you're really hankering for some play or you're still in quarantine and looking to get some New York Zoo to the table, you can do that. Just check out the rule book for those. Otherwise, that is everything you need to know to play New York Zoo. I hope this video helped you out and I hope it was simple enough. If you like it, let me know in the comments. If you like the videos that we're creating for the channel, please consider subscribing. It really goes a long way to helping us continue to do the work that we're doing. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.